a seven-year-old little boy that gets dropped off at school. He's walking down the hall in the school. He's seven years old to his classroom. He is never seen again. The seven-year-old boy, Kyron Horman. Janine Wolf joining us, news reporter with 750 KXL News Radio out of Portland. Janine, what can you tell me about this little boy? Well, it happened 12 days ago, Nancy, Friday, June 4th, and again, he is seven-year-old Kyron Horman. He was driven to school by his stepmother, Terry Horman. They got to Skyline School, and this is a rural area. We're talking farmland here. They got there, we think, around 8 a.m. We're not sure about that. It was a science fair day, so it wasn't a regular day at school. It was open doors, and anyone could pretty much walk in. All of the science fair projects were set up in separate rooms, though. They weren't in a big room. They were all in the children's classrooms. His stepmother, Terry, did take a picture of Chiron. In fact, it's a school, it's a picture you've seen a whole bunch of times everywhere. Today, they actually removed his glasses so you could see him a different way. But he was in front of his exhibit at the fair, and uh, th that was one of the last times he was seen. 8.45 that morning after the fair, Chiron and his stepmother were seen walking down the school uh, hallway toward a classroom. And he was seen by a teacher and two staff members. His friend, his best friend, in fact, also saw him at the fair. But when school started, he wasn't there, and his teacher marked him absent. That's what happened. And then at 3.30 that afternoon, he didn't get off the school bus. He was scheduled to uh, get off that bus. His stepmother called the school. At around 4 p.m., the secretary at Skyline School called the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. And by 5.45, search and rescue teams started scouring the area right around the school. By the way, there were no cameras at the school. Some schools have cameras set up uh, for surveillance, basically. No one had to check in to attend that science fair, Nancy. Mm. Natisha Lance, has the family been cleared? <clears throat> No, they have not been cleared, Nancy. In fact, police are saying that nobody has been cleared, although they are not specifying specific suspects. Who was suspects. the last one with him? Last person with him was his stepmother, and police are saying that, that she is the last person saying that she saw him walking down the hallway. Okay, Natisha, what about that photo? Was that taken at the school that morning? That photo was taken at the school, Nancy, and that is in his classroom. So the science fair wasn't happening in a designated area like the gym. It was happening in specific classrooms all over. So Kyron's exhibit was in his classroom, and he was walking around the school with his stepmother looking at other ex exhibits in different classrooms. To Mark Class, special guest joining us out of San Francisco, president and founder of Class Kids Foundation. Mark, what do you make of it? Well, I, I wish that the family was more forthcoming. I don't like the idea that they've been holding back. On the one hand, you have the family saying that law enforcement has told them not to make any statements. But on the other hand, you have law enforcement saying that the family will speak when they're ready to do so. Now, in any of these kinds of cases, the families are the number one advocates for the child. They're the ones who make them come alive. They're the ones who inspire volunteers um, and the public to search for the child. There's also a problem in my mind, and this just might be a matter of semantics, with the fact that law enforcement um, did a search for seven days, then ended the search, with, which was very comprehensive, and only then announced that they were uh, launching a criminal investigation. Uh, typically, those investigations are launched simultaneously.